And so I'm going to go to Start Menu, and then I'm going to go to the Windows Explorer, and I'm going to maximize out my computer here because I want to see where where you know what did we install? Where did where did it go? It's going to be under Program Files. So if you go under Program Files, let me make this a little bigger. That looks pretty big, and uh, we go uh, we click on uh, the C drive. We go under Program Files. We see Java. Oh, great. And now we see Java. We have two because we just installed two items. What did we install? We installed the 6.0, uh, the, the number 23 update, and we installed the JRE 6. Um, you might have more items here. If you had a JRE on your computer prior to this install, you might see JRE 5 or 4 or something. I'm going to actually do something to make our lives, my life a little easier. I'm going to rename this. Maybe not such a good idea for you guys who want to keep track of what version you have installed because the way it is labeled right now, J JDK, Java Development Kit 1.6.0 underscore 23. I guess it's easy to remember, but we have to re like retype that in somewhere. I'm just going to go and remove it. You don't have to. You can leave it alone if you want. And now it just says JDK on it. And inside the JDK directory, I have a subdirectory called bin. And inside the bin subdirectory, that's where everything is located that I'm going to run. And you see in here we have a Java C command. Uh, here it is. This is what I just tried to run at the uh, command prompt that didn't run. Um, because it's not in my path, which is what we're going to do here. So uh, ultimately what I'm getting at is that we're going to take this directory in Program Files, Java, JDK, Bin, and we're going to add it to the path. That way when we run Java, it'll actually do something. And uh, we need this for Eclipse. We also need this for, for running Java in general. Um, otherwise we're going to end up with a problem or nothing's going to find it. So how do we add this? Well, we go into the Start menu, and we go up to uh, Control Panel, and we find the System icon. I just found it right here, actually. And in the System window, this is going to be the same, maybe a little different instructions if you're working on an XP, excuse me, if you're working on a um, Vista system. This is an XP Service Pack 2 system. Um, so if you click on the Advanced, tab and you look for the bottom of the screen you'll see environment variables we want to go into the environment variables tab or button I should say on the bottom of the screen and then when we open up the window this is environment variables on it we have two parts we have user variables by for owner which is my account I guess on here and then we have system variables. We want to we want actually want to edit the system variables on the bottom. So we're looking for the lower box. And I see path right here in my window. If you don't see it, you can use the arrows to um, scroll up and down in the window. You might see some other stuff in here. I see a lot of stuff I don't even recognize in here. Don't worry about it. Just leave it alone. You don't want to mess your system up. What we're primarily interested in doing is figuring out, you know, how to add it to the path. So I'm going to double click on this path statement and it starts out with actually C colon backslash uh, program files and parallels. Well that's a bunch of tools that I have. Um, I'm going to go to the end of it and I'm going to add a semicolon. Um, hopefully, let me make this a little bigger actually. It's real big now. Um, so I added a semicolon at the end and now I'm going to type in C colon, whoops, colon backslash program space files make sure you capitalize program the p in programs and files backslash and we had, where did i find that i found it in the java sub subdirectory and then there was jdk after that that's why i renamed it jdk if you didn't rename yours you're going to have to figure out what it's called um, it might be called i mean it's probably going to be called jdk uh, dot one dot six something or other and uh, go find out what it's called if you didn't rename it 
So what I've done is I've added the bin directory, which is a subdirectory of JDK, which is a subdirectory of Java from program files, which is all in the C. Now I'm going to press OK. And so I have basically saved the changes. And um, I'm going to press OK again on the box here. If you want, if you're, I don't know if you're, uh, want to double check it, you can double click on the box again and see, and I can kind of see it right here that it's still on the end. And hopefully I've typed it incorrectly. If I haven't typed it incorrectly, I'm going to find out shortly. Um, so I'm going to press OK on this window. And then I'm going to close everything else out. So I'm going to press OK here. Oops, let me make this a little smaller. Okay, there we go. I'm going to close this window out. I'm going to close that window out. Now I'm going to run the same test I did a few minutes ago. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to go to the Start menu. I'm going to go to the Command Prompt. I've got my Command Prompt window out here. And uh, I'm going to make it bigger so you can see what, what happens now. Now I'm going to type in Java C again. And I got a bunch of stuff that comes up. Uh, oh, good, I can scroll. What did I get? Oh, I didn't get a bad command or file name. That was good. What I got were instructions. So usage instructions for Java C, options, source file. Now, to jump ahead a little bit, when we compile Java programs, it's going to look for and it's going to run a Java C command like I just typed in. Eclipse is going to do it for us, so we don't actually have to do this when we're programming. However, um, in this particular case, I have can verified that I have Java installed correctly. Um, so if you type in Java C and you get the usage information with all the possible options and how to use the command itself, that's a good sign. It means that it ran the command and that you have successfully installed Java, which is a very good thing. Um, so at this particular point, you can type in exit, close out your window, and uh, return back to your DOS prompt, uh, excuse me, your Windows system, and uh, prepare yourself now. You, you don't actually have to reboot the system. However, some people like to reboot the system. Um, just to make sure, um, especially if they have multiple users going on. and You probably also want to close all your programs that you're running while you're doing this, which is yeah, probably, probably should have said this earlier, but uh, rarely does there, is there ever a conflict with a running program, but you want to make sure this runs as smoothly as possible. So, In um, the next stage, we're going to install the um, Eclipse and uh, the Eclipse is uh, another tool that we're going to download from the internet. And uh, we, um, so we finished the Java install, step number one. And uh, next, and I'm going to save this for part two of the video, you're going to install Eclipse. And then um, there's a little bit more system configuration we have to do, but it's all inside of Eclipse. So it's not anything to worry about. So.